ushering in a spirit of worship in this place. Part of the song they were singing said, that's love. The scripture says, I just want to read this for you from Romans chapter 5. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's love. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I don't know about you. I'm on overflow from 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, the spirit of God came into the temple. He just, he just had his way. Amen. So thank you, Pastor, for uh, letting God use you. And uh, amen. I, uh, I think about when you look at the world and all the problems that are going on. You, you know, you've seen the news. You know what's going on in Israel and all over the world. But still, God allows us to come into his house. And to hear the word of God preached. That we can hear the songs of Zion song. And uh, we can, so we, we thank God for that. So there were some people, they would love to have done that this morning around the world. They, they, they would love to do what we do right now. But they can't. They're afraid. They're sheltered up. Or, or soldiers are guarding their temple and, and so but we we can we can do this we can worship God we still have the freedom in America to do it and so that's why we we owe God that worship is Christ are you prepared for that God bless you it's time for our responsive reading if you would if all that can stand if you would taken from Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, uh, I often hear talk about the, the Titus 2 woman, and we'll, we'll read about that here, and uh, if you want to turn, if you can turn to Titus chapter 2, verse 1, here you'll find written these words, but speak thou the things which come become sound doctrine. Not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, once again we come before your throne of grace and mercy. God, acknowledging that you are God and God alone. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us so. That, Lord Jesus, you went to Calvary's cross to die for us while we were yet sinners. And so we love you because you first loved us. Lord Jesus Christ, if we had a thousand tongues, to sing and to tell of your goodness and your mercy and your love, it wouldn't be enough. But, oh God, would you accept our worship and our praise this morning? We come praying, oh God, that everything that we do and say and sing this morning would magnify the marvelous name of Jesus. Because, God, where would we be if it would not be for, Lord Jesus, your atoning death, your shed blood on Calvary's cross? We thank you this morning how we we can be saved by faith and so God would you just have control in this service the Holy Spirit as you did it at 8 o'clock would you just have your will and your way in this service today Father someone needs to hear today of your goodness and 
pastor said, if, if you, you can make a way where it seems like there is no way, like you did for David. And God, we just thank you again for bringing us to this hour. Father, for food on our table this morning and a roof over our shoulders. God, we just thank you for every blessing. How there's trouble on every hand in the world. But, oh God, how you brought us to this hour. So, Father, we just thank you. God, for those who are sick and shut in, Father, make a way, Father, where it seems like there is no way. Lord Jesus, you are that balm in Gilead. So move and deliver in the name of Jesus. Father, for those who are bereaved, comfort. Give that cons consolation, Lord, that only comes from you. That's supernatural. We thank you for it. Father, for those who are in distress over a uh, job or maybe a family item or issue. Father, make a way. God, we just thank you for all that you'll do. And again, Holy Spirit, would you just have your will and your way in this service? Father, that someone might come and say, what must I do to be saved or to recommit? So God, we just man, uh, thank you in advance for all that you'll do. We're, we're praying and asking it right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Amen.
salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God is wonderful.
bless and praise our God. Come on, give thanks to a God who's worthy to be praised. If you know he's wonderful, I said if you know he's wonderful, you ought to give him a wonderful praise. Come on, give him a praise that matches who he is. There is none like our God, none like our God, none can do what our God can do. He's worthy of our praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Let everything, let everything, let everything that have breath Praise ye the Lord. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you all for your spirit this morning. We had an amazing praise and worship. Thank God for Reverend Ralford leading us in prayer and responsive reading and this music ministry. We thank God for them blessing us today. Boy, y'all act like y'all slept at a Holiday Inn last night. Amen. Y'all uh, came in for worship this morning. We thank God. Uh, that same energy was at 8 o'clock and looked like we got it at 11 o'clock. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You able to stand, please stand for the reading, reverence, respect for the word of God. Psalms 55, verses 1 through 23. We really got time to read all 23, but I would ask for homework, if you hadn't already read it, that you will spend some time in Psalms 55. But for the sake of time, we'll just do verses 1 through 6 responsibly. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they pass iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror have overwhelmed me. Together. Tactics with the subject betrayed. Betrayed. It is one of the most traumatizing experience one can go through. I don't know who have experienced it, but I will say this: if you hadn't experienced it, keep living. There are some of us in here who have the testimony, we have been betrayed by a family member, by a friend, by a co-worker, by even a church member. The pain pierces our bone. The wound is deep and slow to heal. Betrayal is often referred to as stabbing in the back, or better said, backstabber, or backstabber. There are some things you just 
didn't see coming. Looked like I would have been warned. It looked like I, was, I would have saw that. But when it hits you, you wonder, how did this happen? Then God, how would you let this happen to me? I just didn't see it coming. Not from you. I expected from them. But but not you. You my girl, you my road dog, you my partner. We've shared dinner together. You've been over my house, I've been over your house. I watch your children, you watch my children. We've shared nights together. We've even shared secrets together. You're my confidant, you're my friend, you're my partner, you're somebody who I thought was loyal and someone I thought I could trust only to find out. You're a backstab. Can't trust you. Put my trust in you. And that's why some of you are very leery. You ain't fooled with folk. As soon as I sing the benediction song, you grab your purse and you go. Because you've been hurt. People have burned you. You say to yourself, I ain't going to get burnt like that no more. I ain't fooling with you. I ain't dealing with you. I ain't going to put up with this because it is heartbreaking. And it's a family member. And it's a close confidant. And someone you have confided in and invested in. They break your heart like that. I'm going to be all right, but it's going to be a minute. Don't take me some time. I, I know what the Bible said. Preacher, don't give me that Bible genre right now. I, I, I'm going to get there, but right now, I want to set in my this is where we find David. David, who is king, but he got a son, y'all. You, you Bible readers know about his son, Absalom. And for the sake of those that miss Bible study and church school, Absalom decided he's going to take his father king. That he's going to be the next king. David got to deal with his own son trying to revolt against his king. And then he has this confidant by the name of Ahithophel. Ahithophel is his closest comrade, confidant, on his side, down like two flats with him. His boy, his road dog, his partner, David thought he had somebody in Ahithophel. But he switches. He changes. And he joins the side of Absalom. Come on here, many of y'all. Y'all got to feel this tension in the text. His boy, somebody he never would have thought would betray him and switch sides on him. This can put you in a, in a dark place. David's in a dark place here. This is a song that's called impregatory. This is a impregatory song. It's the kind of prayers you pray you good Christian folks, you don't want nobody to know, but you pray these prayers where you say, 
Get him, Jesus. Oh, y'all going to act like that? You got some prayers where you say, Lord, I need you to get them. I need you to get them, Lord. You going to let them do your girl like that? You going to let them do your boy like that? I, I, I know what the Lord say, turn the other cheek, but right now I'm riding with David in this imprecatory prayer, and I need you to get him, God. Shame on them to hurt me like that. Shame on them to do me like that. God, get them. Is there anybody in here know what it's like to be betrayed, and you want some justice? I need some, some justice. Y'all hold on here a minute. Because I know I'm going to miss some of you. you. You riding right now and everybody's your friend. And I used to be so naive to think everybody was my friend. Everybody loved me. I mean, why wouldn't you love me? I mean, I'm a cool dude. I'm a good dude. I, I'll buy your lunch. I mean, I, 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 I'll help you out. Who, who wouldn't like me? I mean, I, I'm a good dude. I love the Lord. and I praise the Lord with you. I pray for you. Bring you some food. Come see you in the hospital. Who wouldn't love? Love me. I used to be so naive to think if I treated everybody right. Yeah. Everybody would treat me like I treated them. And I've come to know people don't even have to have a reason why they don't like you. They just don't like you. And they're based up wall off how they feel about you based upon what somebody else has said about you. Not knowing anything about you, but what I'm glad to report to you. What you know and what you say about me does not validate who I am. Does not take from who I am. I know who I am. I know whose I am. Is there anybody in here who know you a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. Is there anybody in this house know who made you? You were created in the image and likeness of God. Behold, he made you in his splendor and in his beauty. You have been wonderful, creatively made by the master. What gets David through this? Couple of things and I'll get out of your way. He has a strong prayer life. Of course, he takes the matter to the Lord. Verse 1 through 7, we see he releases his frustration. David is frustrated with his friend and son, but he's also frustrated with God. Come on, look at his language. Look at verse 1, Psalms 55. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me, hear me. That's a lot of requests right there, y'all. Give in, hide not, pay attention, and hear me as if God is not present. And if God is not listening to his prayer. He has a complaint here in verse 2. He, he says, I mourn in my complaint. He makes noise because he is in mourning. He's grieving over what 
has transpired. His heart is broken. One commentator says that it's like being torn from the inside out. But his heart has been broken into little bitty pieces. New Hope, I want to tell you something. It's all right not to be okay. See, we are so programmed. Ask somebody right now, how you doing? They're going to say, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. But it's all right to say I'm not all right. Not being sacrilegious. It's not being anti-Christian if you say you're not all right. There are times in which we ain't all right. Come on, talk to me here. I, I know you've been taught you've been too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. I, I know you've been taught all of that, but you need to know that there are times when you are stressed. There are times when you are disappointed. Good news is we got somebody who can heal us and who can fix us. Good news is I don't have to stay in the condition that I am. We have a potter who knows how to put the pieces back together. Even if your heart has been broken into little bitty pieces, I ought to have at least 10 witnesses in here. God can heal you. Yes, he can. I'm going to tell you when you know you're healed. You know you're healed when people who have hurt you, you can speak to them. You can pray for them. You can say God bless you and really mean it from your heart. Yeah. That's when the Lord has healed you from your broken heartedness. Because bitterness will eat at you in such a way that it will end up destroying your life and yeah. destroying your joy. And it took me too long to get my joy for you to let somebody or something take what God has given. Is there anybody with the testimony? This joy that I had, the world didn't give to me. And hallelujah, the world can't take away. But verse 6, David does something that many of us do. He goes into or wishes for escapism. All that I had wings like a dove. I'll fly away, be at rest. Cow gun, just take me away. I just want to escape the situation. I say all the time, you can't fix what you don't face. This ain't time to run from it. This is the time to, if you don't run to it, at least stand against it. Because God will allow us this space to release our frustration. Not only is there the release of frustration. Verses 8 through 15 speaks of a request for God's justice. I know you're saying, get him, Lord. But the justice of God is going to prevail. I know the world call it karma. You know, you, we, we in the in, in the Christian arena, we understand you reap what you sow. And I know the world call it karma that, you know, you just get back what you put out. It's like a boomerang effect. Watch what you put out because it's going to come back on you. But we must understand God has a system of justice. And it works. Dr. Martin Luther King says, the arch of the universe, the arch of the moral universe, 
The art of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Somehow, some way, justice will be served. We serve a God who loves justice. We serve a God who desires justice. There's nothing wrong with praying for the justice of God. The kingdom of God. The righteousness of God. We as people of God ought to want justice to prevail in every circumstance. Not just with our own personal but worldwide, we ought to want God's justice to, to stand and prevail. Even in the Middle East, we ought to want the justice of God to prevail. Regardless of who's right, who's wrong, let your justice prevail. But even in my own personal life, God will bring about justice. God's justice will prevail. Big Mama would put it like this. What's done in the dark? Definitely come to the light. God has a way of shining a light on it. Much as you try to hide much as you try to throw a rock and hide your hand, the justice of God is going to prevail. I, I'm glad God's justice will prevail. So much so that Joseph concluded, you meant it for bad. But God, through his justice, means it for my that's why you and I can say Romans 8, 28, we know that all things are working together for the good because we understand the justice of God. Not only do we understand the justice of God, that we can request for justice, but in these times, it is a time that we should reinforce our faith. Look at verse 16 here a minute and I'll get out of your way. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Look what he says in 17, evening, morning, and at noon, will I pray and cry out loud. It is a time in which you shouldn't abandon your faith, but you should embrace your faith. David makes it a matter of prayer, and he's confident that the Lord is going to work things out. Every battle is not yours to fight. I think I need to say that 52 more times. Every battle is not your fight. I know you. I'm just going to try to get to the bottom of it. I got to find out who said what and when they said and where they were when they said, listen, you wasting too much time and energy trying to get to the bottom of it. Because in most cases, you already know who said what and who did what. At some point in your life, you ought to be old enough where you ain't just chasing he say, she say. Caught up in the rumor mill and in the gossip mill. I wish I had about 12 grown folks in here. There is just some things that just beneath me now. Some of y'all graduated 
from high school, but you hadn't graduated from junior high yet. Because it's junior high stuff. Trying to chase and run down. I ain't got time to give that much energy to foolishness. I'm on a mission. I'm, on, I'm going somewhere. I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to make some things. I got a family to raise. I got bills to pay. I ain't got time to be dealing with foolishness. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to redirect that energy to enforce my faith. I'm going to pray about the situation. I'm going to do like Big Mama. I'm going to put you in the hand of the Lord. Somebody know he will work it out. I know your neighbor don't believe you, but I need some witnesses here who can watch God work some situations out that you couldn't work out yourself. Matter of fact, the more you tried, the worse it got. But when you step back and let God fix it and let God work it out, what my folks had in here who are witness that God will work some things that you cannot work out. Why are you trying to figure it out? God has already worked it out. The more you talk about me, the more I'm going to bend my knees because there's power in prayer, power in talking to God. You can do more on your knees than you can on your feet with your fists in your mouth. Try a little prayer mail instead of email. Try a little texting. God's text instead of your own text and watch God fight your battle where my folks at who stood still and you got the testimony he is a mighty act in the time of trouble won't he fight for his child won't he work things out won't it make your enemy your footstool? Huh? Huh? I've lived long enough to see God turn things around. I've lived long enough to watch him shift enemies into friends, take haters, and make them bless you. Take foes and have them to help you. Is there anybody seeing God turn things around? Let me leave you when I tell you. Reinforce your faith. But let's go home here, New Hope. Verse 22 and 23. Y'all got to see this. And we done. I want to leave you with my last point. Rely on the Lord. Here's David in a situation where he cannot fight against what's happening. Lies and rumors are being told. And sometimes when you are trying to fight against it's almost like being in quicksand. That the more you fight against, the worse it gets. But watch what David does in verse 22. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Boy, that's a drop your mic moment there. We was in another kind of church. That would be the end of the message right there. I would just say, go in peace. One day we're going to get there. I don't even have to sweat. I would just say, leave it in the hands of the Lord. 
Just give it to the Lord. Somebody feeling better already? You've been riding with me this whole message. When I talked about portrayal, some names just start flashing in your mind. But you're going to leave here lighter. Because that burden you came in with, you're going to give it to the Lord. Y'all come on, help me close here. Since you done laid your burden down, you ought to give God some praise. That you got somebody you can take your burden to. Now, I don't know who that friend, that family member, that co-worker, that church member that hurts you. But you ain't going to allow it to stop you. Because you're going to give that burden to the Lord. Let me see what I can, let me see if I can finish reading this. He said, cast our burdens upon the Lord. And what will he do? Come on, y'all been preaching my whole message anyway. What will he do? He will sustain you. God will hold you. Look what else he says. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. There'll be people talking about, oh, it's just too many devils in the church. I can't stay here. They go somewhere else, too much devil here. I can't stay here. Well, saints shouldn't run from devils. Devils should run from saints. How many devils have you raised? Because the text says the righteous shall not be moved. I want y'all to know I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay right here. Because I'm like the tree that's planted by the river of water. And I shall not be moved. The winds may blow. The thunder may roll. But I'm going to stay right here. Because the Lord is upholding me. Won't he keep me? I said, won't he keep me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me get to the last sentence. It says, but I will trust in thee. That I got to put my trust in him. Lord, I need you to fix this. I need you to work it out. I did all the counseling I'm going to do. I did all the, the conferences I'm going to do. I'm going to do all the phone calling and apology and I can do. I done did all that. Now, Lord, is in your hand. I done did all the begging and pleading I can do. Now I'm putting it in your hand. And I want y'all to know God can fix it. His hands are stronger than ours. His hands is mighty than ours. We got to put it in his hand. For we have not a high priest who have not been touched with our affirm. Jesus know what it's like to be betrayed. Jesus had 12 disciples and one of them was the devil and one of them betrayed him one night in the garden he came and kissed our Lord on the cheek I wonder how Jesus felt somebody that walked with him Somebody that's seen miracles. Somebody that's seen breakthroughs. Turn their backs on him. Jesus said, 
I know just how you feel, but I want you to know something. To every crucifixion, there is a resurrection in spite of your life. In spite of all the gossip and the rumors, your hating, your, your hating against the will of God, God used it to elevate me. Is there anybody? No, God will use what the enemy thought would kill you to only promote you. God will use your heartaches and your heartbreaks to give you a testimony. Some of y'all can sing real good. It ain't all because of your gift, but it's because of what you've been through. It's because You've been cut and you've been hurt deeply, but now you've got a testimony that God is able to give you bounce back, come back. It was only a setup for your comeback. Now, now, now. I thank God for every valley, for every mountain, and every hater, because God used them to promote and lift me up. My prayer life is so much stronger because of you. Matter of fact, I really want to sing you a thank you note. Thank you for talking about me. Thank you for hating on me. Thank you for lying on me. Thank you for abusing me because it only made me stronger. This praise and this worship that I have, it's for real because I got the scars, I got the wounds, I got the crucifixion, but I want you to know I won't stay on the cross, go on, nail me to the cross, go on, spin me in the side, go on, and put a thorn on my head and go on and put me in the grave but that's all right because soon and very soon early i said early sunday morning didn't they got up weeping may endure for a night but joy, 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 joy comes in the morning. I, I, I gotta thank you for all that you took me through. All those tearful nights, all of that hurt and that pain, all of the lies and abuse. I'm switching it from being bitter to being better. I am so much better. I am so much stronger. I am so much wiser. I am so much spiritual. Won't it do it? I said, won't it do it? Thank you that it didn't stop me, that it didn't block me. That in spite of all you did, God still blessed. God still promoted. God still made a way 
Is there anybody want to give God a strong praise? Because you know they trying to get you fired. They trying to stop the promotion. They trying to hinder your ministry. But the Lord kept lifting and elevating. That's how you know it was nobody. It was nobody but you, God. Because when the enemy came in like a flood, you lifted up a standard. And I, 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 testimony that no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against will prosper because the Lord is on my side. Is there anybody in this place want to give him a mighty praise, a strong praise? They tried it, but it didn't work. They set up, but it didn't work. They did get you, but it didn't work. You got a God on your side. Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bless him. Come on, give thanks. Oh, bless him. Come on, if you know, if you know the Lord has been your light and your salvation, and the wicked and the enemies came on you. To eat of your flesh, they stumbled in faith. The hosts encamp around, your heart will not fear. Because in the time of trouble, what will he do? He'll hide you. He'll keep you. And he'll hold you. I know it hurt. I know it hurt. I know what it feels like to be stabbed in the back, to be betrayed, but it made me better. And I'm not gonna let the world make me mean. I'm gonna keep loving, keep giving, keep sharing, cause God got me and God got it. And today, somebody's going to leave here lighter because you're going to put that burden on the Lord. Matter of fact, when they come to your mind, you tell the devil, that's in the Lord's hand. I'm putting in the Lord's hand. And watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Work it out. Stand still. There's somebody word today. Stand still and see salvation of the Lord. Come on, stand all over the house. Stand all over the house. We extend the invitation. We invite you to come. Today is your day. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your chance. Don't miss your opportunity. Come on, cast your burdens upon him. 
Make this your day. Come on, make this your day. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on, New Hope. Come on, New Hope. Come on, New Hope. Bless his name. Bless his name. Come on, somebody else need to be coming. Somebody else need to be coming. Come on, sister. Come on, we've been waiting on you. Come on, sister. Come on, New Hope. I wish I had a real church right here. Y'all ought to celebrate what God is doing in somebody else's life. Wow. Come on, let's do that one more time, one more time. We'll give you just another, another minute here. Come on. Still waiting. Come Why don't you make up your mind? Make up. What would he do? What would he do? Make your life. Do me this one favor, do me this one favor. Person next to you, just ask them, do you need me to walk with you? I'll walk with you. Just ask them, do you need me to walk with you? I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Come on, if you need me to walk with you, I'll walk with you. Come on, don't, don't miss, don't miss this train. Old folks used to put it this way. I'm taking the morning train. Because the evening train might be too late. Come on, we're waiting. We trust you come. We're waiting. We're waiting. We trust you come. Did not our hearts burn as he preached to us the scriptures? God has spoken. Let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> Sister Scott, who do we have today? To our pastor, Reverend Ralford, to our other ministers, members, and friends, we have Kim Deutsch and Delena. Young, both of them are coming with Christian experience and would like to become members here at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. God bless you. Um, we want to extend to you the right hand. 
Sister Kim, <laughs> I want to extend you the right hand to welcome, and uh, we want you to come back and to go through our new membership orientation, after which we will give you the right hand of mel uh, fellowship. God bless you. Good to have you today. Sister Hua, Hua, Glenn the Young. Mr. Young, God bless you for coming to join this fellowship today. Again, we'll give you the right hand of welcome. And we want you to come, like I said, to be a part uh, of the new membership orientation, after which, I went through it also, all of us, just, I think all of us did, amen, after which we will give you the right hand of membership and fellowship. God bless you. Good to have you today. Might we pray? Eternal God, once again, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. Thanking you that you've spoken today. Thanking you for these that have come to be a part of this fellowship. And God, we just pray that you would just look down upon us, meet every need that's present. God, I don't know, and a lot of us, we don't know what's going on, but you do. So, God, I'm just praying right now in the name of Jesus that, Father, you would deliver where it's needed, bless where it's needed. And, God, we'll just thank you in advance for what you're going to do. God, we know what you can do. We've seen it. So, Father, bless. And we'll give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory when you do it. Praying it right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate what God is doing in the life of New Hope. Thank God for our two sisters this morning. Amen. So we want to lift mom in prayer. Thank you so much and keep her lifted before the Lord. Amen. We're getting out at a good time, ladies and gentlemen. I pray and trust we can hold our position. It is time in which we call together around the table and to remember what our Lord and Savior has done for us by way of the cross. He says, I'm going to do the hard part. I'm going to die. All I want you to do is to remember until I come back. He said, do this until I return again. Say, I won't eat with you when he spoke with the disciples. We will now won't eat again and drink again until we're in the kingdom together. And so they can't clown them until you and I get there. And we'll all sit around the table. But right now, as we come together, let us gather our hearts and minds to focus on our Savior. Lord, we thank you for a Savior that loved us in spite of us. Thank you for making all things true and real. Thank you for the reality of a Savior. Thank you for the reality of a place that is better than this. We thank you right now. Prepare our hearts now to eat and drink. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you receive a cup, hold it for further instruction.
took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it unto them, saying, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. God, we thank you so much for the power of your broken body. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us eat. Likewise, also, the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup of New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, God, we thank you again for your shed blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us drink. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing sin I cry. There to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. Bad to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, his precious name. Glory to his name. Bad to my heart was the blood of life. and reds today that y'all wore him wore them out today thank y'all for working our musician and y'all work me today amen i am more out so if i don't answer your call uh y'all know why uh, i'm asleep i'm asleep amen I, I should wake up about six or seven the lord say the same but i'm gonna go take a nap amen Listen, listen, it's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. Matthew 6, 21 said, where your treasures are, there your heart be also. So you really don't have a tithing problem, giving problem. You got a heart problem. God really wants you. He wants your heart. And what you love can be detected by what you invest in. If you love your children, your money is there. Love your spouse, your money is there. You love your home, your car, it's there. If you love God's church, if you love the house of God, it's there. And I want y'all to know this is good ground. This is good ground. I've been here almost 17 years. And we have been a ministry of integrity financially. Amen. We have been a ministry of integrity. There was only one time 
that I recall my 17 years, uh, we didn't know what happened to $100, $100. I mean, we don't know what happened to it this day, and I'm just being transparent, and we, $100 out of 17 years, that's still pretty good. We don't know what happened to it, but I reached in my pocket and just made up on it, and we just kept it moving. Uh, it may have been some accounting area, maybe it been a decimal here or there, uh, but we have been a ministry of integrity. And so this is good seed. Y'all give me some money, I can show you what we can do. But we can't do nothing without some money, amen? And so I need your help and support. Pray and trust, you trust me, trust this ministry, trust God enough to give of your resources. You've already given up your time, uh, but God also demands that we give of our tithes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ursus are on the way. Thank you again for your generous love gift. As I pour into you, scripture require that you will pour into me. Amen? So thank you so much for blessing this ministry and blessing me. Amen? Amen. Thank you so, so very much. Certainly want to thank our women's ministry put on a wonderful event on yesterday, uh, breast cancer uh, awareness, a uh, wonderful lunch. Uh, it was very informative, and uh, I thank God for our leader, Sister Le uh, Yolanda Relford. Uh, thank you so, so very much for, for leading our women's ministry and just a wonderful, wonderful time on yesterday. Amen. Look like I see a cancer survivor over here. Come on, let's thank God for our sister. Amen. Amen. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Amen. Any other survivors in the house? Y'all stand. Man. We got any survivors in the house? Amen. Amen. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Amen. We celebrate you and we thank God for you. Amen. All visitors, please stand. All visitors, we have anyone visiting with us, be kind enough to stand. Any family and friends feel like standing? Amen. Amen. My cousin Joyce, still in the house. Still in the house. Amen. Glad to see you and all of our visitors and friends. Look like Miss Williams got some folks back there. Amen. Amen. Y'all stand. Y'all stand. Come on. This is Miss Williams daughter and son-in-law and grandbaby. Amen. Thank God for you all. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here and being with us. want to remind us Wednesday night, Wednesday night is going down at New Hope. It's going down at New Hope. We got five more weeks of Bible study and I've asked that at least 20 more that don't know them to come to Bible study. You know you ain't at home doing nothing. No way. Come on out these last five weeks, and I guarantee you, you won't leave saying, I hate I came. You're going to say, I, I'm glad I came. And so we ask that you come out. We have our intercessory prayer, noon Bible study, looking to see you this Wednesday. And then next Sunday, we're having our jersey, not next Sunday, the third Sunday in November, our casual Sunday. We're having our jersey Sunday, and we're going to make it a big event for our church and community. We gonna do what y'all do when y'all go to the game. Y'all tailgate. We gonna tailgate for church. Amen. And we gonna start at 6 a.m. Don't worry, don't worry. We got breakfast for your little ones and you. Breakfast for everybody. Breakfast for everybody. Now don't be coming with all them special orders. We got bacon, eggs, sauces. And on our, ain't no special orders or waffles you bring. Bring your own little breakfast if you got special order. But we're going to have breakfast. And then we need these teens who are so proud of your team. The Still Nation has already got a spot. Stand, Miss Brenda. Stand, Miss Brenda. Please see Miss Brenda. And we're charging. And we ain't trying to make money off this. But what we're going to do is use this to pay for the food. And so uh, each tailgating spot is $250. 
And so, you know, you talk about your team, y'all get together, see if y'all can come up with 250. I know that's gonna be tough for some of y'all, but still a nation, still a nation has already got this spot. We, we've already, we might even get two spots, might get three spots, it don't, it don't matter, but we, we, we already in place, so you find your, I don't know if Dallas wanna have a spot after what happened last Sunday. Oh, that, that was hard to watch, that was hard to watch. So I don't know if y'all wanna get a spot, but y'all can, y'all get y'all a spot. Giants can get your spot. Tennessee Titans can get a spot. New England can get a spot. Uh, 49ers, y'all, y'all get y'all a spot. And uh, we're just gonna have some good holy fun here on the campus here. We're gonna call this a campus. We're gonna have some fun right here at New Hope. Amen? Amen. So we, well, we're still coming for worship. We're still coming for worship. And so we are on time church. So at 759, we're in place. We're in place. Because if we get here at 8, we're late. 759, in place. 1059, in place. And we're going to have worship and we're going to invite our community to have worship with us. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Brother Julius, you had your hand up. We, we're going to be all over, man. We ain't, we ain't letting y'all in no secrets. Y'all might have to get together and just maybe y'all can nickel and dime. Maybe you can get with some Broncos or some Miami Dolphins. Y'all just get together. We don't know what who under that tent. But we will have still a nation in place. So any other questions? We're moving on. We're moving on. Let's move on. Let's move on. You want to get the Titans together? Uh, it ain't but one. Of, it ain't but one or two. It ain't but one or two. It 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 it, it, it ain't one or two. Look, let's call let's call the house the order. Let's call the house the order. Let's lift our gift. Let's lift our gift. Lift our gift. Proverbs chapter three, verse nine and ten. Let's say it together. Honor the Lord with thy substance. First fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy press shall burst out with new wine. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift and giver. Blessed in us, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we move, before we move, uh, Sister Williams need to make an announcement. If you use the mic, if you use the mic, those at home need to hear. Make sure that mic is on for Sister William, and then someone, all right, Mother Johnson is coming with announcement for our women's ministry. Good afternoon. Just want to remind you all of our uh, Hallelujah Night, which is October the 28th from 5 to 7. I need you all to bring your candy and bring a donation if you don't bring your candy. Uh, I need some two volunteers for their trunks. I have about five. I need about two more. Uh, just make sure you all come out. Thank you. Amen. Y'all be kind and so Sister Johnson, this is her first time speaking in church, so y'all smile and be friendly as she speaks. All right, one of the sweetest ladies of our church, we thank God for. You all, I am just so happy to be here until when you see me, I'm grinning all of the time. I'm just happy, love my pastor, church, Sunday school. We had a dynamic time this morning, uh, and I just want to Thank you all for accepting me here, because I'm happy. I really am. <laughs> now, I arose to make the announcements for the women's, the women's ministry here. And ladies, all of you, whether you are active or not, if you're a woman here at New Hope, you are part of this women's ministry, okay? And we want to support our women's ministry. And what we want to let everybody know is naturally on the fifth Sunday in this month will be our special women's emphasis month, uh, day, excuse me. And we're gonna have uh, wonderful speakers for the eight and 11 a.m. services. So you all come on and be with us, okay? Uh, for our choir, 
they're having rehearsals after battle study on Wednesday night, right after Bible study. So any of you, and I hear you singing out there because I'm singing out there too, come on and help the choir uh, and be a part just for this special day and everything. Now the colors that we're going to be wearing, black and pink corsage. Okay, now any lady who does not have a corsage, uh, Sister Crystal, she has two for us for only $2. So ladies, let's put on our black and our pink, okay? And we have a special assessment, which is just $20. I've been in church a long time. I never heard of a $20 donation. But Lord, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. So once again, please, Let's support our women because all of this benefits what? It benefits New Hope Church, okay? And like Pastor was just saying, you don't hear no mess of scandal, you know, not trying to be disparaging to anybody. Y'all, this is such a good place to be and everything, and I'm happy. Thank you, Pastor. Gonna let you do the commercial for the church. You good, you good advertisement, amen. All right, if you will stand, follow the directions of our ushers. Come from the rear. Bring your gift. so much all men all men tomorrow night six o'clock all men tomorrow night six o'clock and uh, uh, we'll be out before Monday night football so uh, we only one hour from six to seven and uh, if you show up they might win if you show up they might win if you don't show up you know they're gonna lose all right so we need you to be here Y'all definitely need prayer after last Sunday. Definitely need prayer. That was, that was, that was a debacle. That was, that was horrible. That was tough to watch. But I watched every bit of it. I did. I did. All right. All right. Um, all hearts and minds clear. Let's go home. Here we go. Yesterday, a man said to me, he said, how can you smile when your world is crumbling down? I say, here's my seat when I want to cry. Take a look around, and I see that I'm getting by. And I hold on. Change is coming. Hold on. Don't worry about a thing, oh no, you can make it, you can make it. oh no, oh, no. The thing. some people like to worry, some people like to hide, some people like to hide from the things inside, well it's your business, do what you want to do, but if it don't work out, 
Here's what you ought to do, now just hold on. Change is coming. Hold on. Don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. La 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 Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the close of another worship experience. Thank you for your word today that reminds us that in spite of being betrayed, you blessed anyway. You delivered anyway. And Lord, I pray for the spirit that came in burden. Lord, we thank you for breakthroughs. We're going to cast our burdens, our problems, our trials. We're going to leave it at your feet. We're going to sleep better tonight. We're going to rest better. We're, food will taste better. We will digest our food better because our burdens are at your feet. Blood pressure will come down. Stress will be relieved. Anxiety will be removed because we've laid our burdens at your feet. Thank you, God, for giving us a place to take our burdens. We lift before you all of our bereaved, all of our sick and shedding. We, we lift before you those who are dealing with stress and anxiety and depression, mental illness, God, we pray your power and deliverance. Now, Lord, as we're making ready to leave this place, many of us will go dying we ask that you will bless our food for the nourishment of our body. Some will go and be with family. We pray for fellowship. Some may be going home by themselves, but they're not alone. Because all day and all night, your angels are not just watching over. They're keeping us company. And Lord, we say thank you for angelic presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Forever give you the praise, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.